Hey guys, and welcome to your second and final biochemistry lab. This week we'll be doing PCR, which stands for Poly Polymerase Chain <laughs> Reactions, and um, we'll be using these micropipetters during the lab. So basically what a micropipetter does, it's a very accurate way to measure extremely small quantities of volume. So we have these different color caps on the top of the micropipetters. There's blue, yellow, and white. And these colors correspond to the color um, tips that you'll be using with them. So the blue tips measure um, up to a mil in a volume. The yellow tips uh, measure um, more popular quantities that are less than a mil. And finally, the white tips are the smallest, which measure up to 10 microliters. And since our reaction that we, we will be performing in the PCR lab is only 10 microliters large, this is the only pipetter that we'll be using. Okay, so now that we've got our white capped 10 microliter pipette, which is also called the P10, um, we'll be using this for the rest of the lab to measure out all of our reagents. So first of all, we have to learn how to use it. Um, an important note is that you should never leave it on the table or the bench top uh, horizontally like this. It should always be upright, um, put it on a stand, or just hold it yourself when it's not in use. Secondly, putting on the cap, uh, it's important to know that you should never use your hands. Don't pick up the cap and put it on yourself. Simply hold the pipetter above the, the, the tip and gently put it in and then give it some nice taps and it's all secure and good to go. Now when you're measuring liquid, you never want to allow any liquid at all to submerge above the tip. So never touch the pipetter at all in any form with the liquid. Simply just lower just like that. So when you are measuring, you want to push down this top here as much as you can with little force until it stops. So right there. You can push further to like that, but you don't want to do that until you're releasing the liquid. So again, when you're collecting your liquid, just push down halfway until it stops. Then submerge your tip, release, and that's the amount you have. And now when you're dispensing it, you push all the way down as much as you can. Just like that. Finally, you can get rid of your used tips by pushing down on this button here to dispense your tip off. So Polymerase chain reaction is very sensitive to contamination, so it's very important that you wear gloves um, throughout this entire procedure. Um, and you don't want to be like touching your hair or your nose or anything while you have your gloves on. So like uh, Alan said, we're using the P10, the small pipetter. Um, to change the volume you'll be uptaking and dispensing, you release the lock on the top, and then you can freely twist the dial to change the volume along here. So for instance, 400 means 4 microliters. 4.50 is 4.5 microliters, and so on. So um, essentially, we really can't overstate how small these volumes are that we're working with. Um, and what we'd like to do here is try to give you guys a feel for how small these volumes are. Essentially, your reaction is going to consist of a master mix, um, which contains things like DNTP, um, the free nucleotides that are required to expand a sequence of DNA. You'll have a forward and a reverse primer. Both are uh, for a particular gene and are diluted to a 1 in 20. So we also have template DNA, which is diluted in a 1 in 10. And in this particular reaction, we have a, a dye that you can add to your reaction and it's compatible with the reaction. And that way, when your PCR reaction is finished, you can load it directly into the gel and you won't have to add a dye in order to see it. So it's this red dye, and you include this in your reaction mix. And that way, when you load your reaction onto the gel, you can see it. Uh, you can see your reaction in the gel because it's red. So now we're going to show you how to actually put the reagents together in, and make your reaction mix. Um, so we start with uh, you can start with the largest volume, which is the master mix. So first, like Alan described, you adjust 
the pipetter to the appropriate volume, which for the master mix is 5 microliters. So we twist the dial to 5 microliters. And then we open the tip box. And you always want to leave the, the tip box closed when you're not using it to decrease contamination. So you open the pipette tip box and a couple taps to make sure it's on. So you have your pipetter in one hand. With your other hand, you pick up the reagent. Oh, and we should mention that all the reagents have to be kept cold in order to be stable. So there will be an ice box shared amongst some of you on the bench uh, with all of the required materials in here. And when you need them, you just take them to use them, put them back on the ice. So we'll take the, the master mix. And you really want to make sure, well, first of all, you want to make sure that it's completely thawed and that it's really well mixed. So you would invert it gently a few times to make sure it's well mixed. And then you eliminate, you um, remove the top. You can just set, set the top down, like this. And then you want to insert the tip into the liquid, just, just enough into the liquid. So, and then you raise your thumb gently and out comes the liquid. And then you set that down. You pick up your PCR tube, which is very small. You open it. A little bit of a struggle. And then you insert the tip into the small tube. And you want to dispense the liquid at the very bottom of the tube to the second stop. And you remove. And then you dispense the tip. So when you're ready to add your second reagent, you again you use a new tip for each reagent. It's really important. Um, so again, you take a tip, and so all of the other components of this reaction um, are one microliter volumes. So you just adjust your pipette to one microliter, and you should be good for the rest of the time. And so we can start with um, say four primer. Again, you want to push down the pipette to the first stop before it's in the liquid. So push to the first stop, then hold it, insert into the liquid, lift up, and then you add it to the larger volume that's already in your tube. So to do this, you want to try to watch it happen. So when you're dispensing the liquid, you want to try to visually see the liquid being added to the larger volume. That way you can make sure that it's been added. Because these are such small volumes, sometimes it doesn't come out of the tip or something happens. So you want to try to, to dispense the smaller volume directly into the larger volume and see it happen. So you add all the remaining components of your action, including the one microliter of water. Um, and then you want to take your P10 put it back up to 10 microliters, which is the total volume of the reaction. And then you basically want to make sure your reaction is well mixed. So you put it up to 10. And then basically you put your pipette tip into your total volume once you've, once you've added, added everything. And you just mix up and down from the first stop up and down so that you get everything well mixed, trying really hard not to, in, not to introduce bubbles, which isn't too hard with this mix. And then you're all mixed, all the reagents are in there, and you're ready to just put your, your reaction tube into the thermocycler. Um, and then you wait, and the reaction will take place, and then we will load it onto the gel, which we'll show you momentarily. <laughs>